Hi, I'm Dave Fornell with the 353rd Prussian Reserve Regiment in World War I. We have a trench display here at Reenactor Fest. It's supposed to be France 1917. We did a generic impression so we could have both Allied and German units swap back and forth using the same trench section. Let's take a look. Inside, we tried to simulate the edge of a trench on a hill where we have a firing step that you can go up and fire over the edge. And then we have a machine gun position down here at the end with a 30 caliber water-cooled machine gun. The inside, we tried to simulate a 10-man bunker, which would have been typical uh, with the low ceilings, uh, just big enough to sleep guys uh, in the evenings and try to keep warm, like on a cold uh, February day that we have today, 10 guys with 10 blankets and a couple lanterns going to keep pretty cozy. This section we have is more of full-scale trench, where we have a full-scale firing trench uh, that you can fire over the wall. We also have the assault ladder so we can go over the top when we're assaulting the enemy trenches and getting mowed down by machine gun fire. So we're inside the 10-man German bunker in the World War I display. We have personal effects set up. Everything we tried to reconstruct uh, out of uh, box materials and uh, wooden boxes that would have been shipped uh, to the troops with food or with ammunition rations. There's personal effects, books. We got a bottle of vintage schnapps, a captured French helmet, and captured rations from the British in the French trenches. You'll note on the walls that we also have our gas mess drying out from a gas attack from a couple days ago, uh, trying to dry out the perspiration and the condensation from within the masks. Well, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, too, I actually have a periscope here uh, looking over into no man's land. Because at the time, sir, if I were to basically t uh, take uh, a peek over the top, sir, there would be machine gun and infantry units that would be willing to pick, uh, basically shoot at anything that would pick their head, stick their heads over the top. So the, the periscope was developed to look into no man's land without, without the danger of actually being shot at. What I'm holding here is an Eddystone uh, rifle. So it was uh, created by Remington Winchester and, Win, uh, Winchester and the Eddystone Company. Uh, so these were uh, produced in uh, 1914 for the British. And what happened was the British didn't really care, uh, really care for these. They preferred the Lee Enfield 303 rifles instead. Well, when America got involved in the war, so uh, the the military went to uh, 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 went to Springfield Army and requested they need a, a one million 19, 1903 Springfield to be produced. But Springfield pretty much went, "Are you nuts? We can't produce something that big that fast." So scratching their heads, they're looking around. They found that the Remington had been producing they had a large stockpile of the P14s at the time. So all they had to do was was rebarrel and, and re, uh, re, uh, redesign the chambers. And basically, they were redesignated as P-17s or, or Eddystone 1917s.